Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thankfully, today's press conference is so much different than the one we did last Wednesday. In fact, just about every time I come to the microphone, I'm talking about uh, some kind of a crime that was committed, uh, some suspect who is uh, on the run, or else a case which we have successfully brought, brought to conclusion. But today's different. As we all know by now, young Josiah Moore was found, and she was found unharmed in New York City. Since I came to the Essex County Prosecutor's Office in 2018, the Prosecutor's Office has focused on melding the professionalism which this office brings to the table, along with collaboration, collaborating with our tremendous law enforcement partners who bring so much talent and energy to every situation. Today's success is a result of that sort of an operation, melding the cooperation as well as an all-hands deck approach that was utilized by the Essex County Prosecutor's Office along with our great team of partners. Recognition must be given to the following entities. The East Orange Police Department, the Essex County Sheriff's Office, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the New Jersey State Police, the Orange Police Department, the Elizabeth Police Department, and of course, NYPD. But we must also thank the following individuals. The concerned citizens who thought enough to really turn their concern into action by putting up money and adding to the reward which was on the table. Also, and certainly not the least, you, the media who really followed this from the very beginning and who felt and recognized that this was an important story and was important to bring this concern about a missing young African-American girl and that made sure that stayed in the public's mind and gave it the attention which it so dearly deserved. And of course, we want to thank the public at large who did a tremendous job also capitalizing on the importance of the story and using social media in the way really I think it was meant to be used in order to bring it. All of these things collectively were used as a force multiplier in order to bring this to a successful conclusion. We can't say thank you enough. So I want to give the, our partners an opportunity to also express to you their concerns or their thanks really for today since it's ended in such a tremendous format. Let's start with the East Orange Police. Well, let's start with the sheriff. The sheriff, I want to start with him on my right hand side. Sheriff, you have any words? Thank you, Prosecutor. Uh, I just want to echo what the prosecutor said. Clearly, clearly, this was a, a, a result, great result, based an awful lot on what you folks were able to do for us. We appreciate it very much. Uh, we like to call you our partners most of the time. Sometimes you, you know, you, you jump on us, but that's okay. But in this particular case, clearly, you know, the, the, the attention that you gave it uh, brought this to a successful conclusion. Uh, the reward money, as the indicator, is still out there. We have been, uh, been able to, uh, to determine from the uh, person who uh, hit whether he or she is interested in that. There are other folks that gave us some tips, but it's still available, and it's there. If it needs to be given out, we were more than happy to do so. Thank you. Right. So if somebody, when they hear that, the money is definitely going to get a claim. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, Chief Phyllis Bendy from the East Orange uh, Police Department. Good morning, everyone, and thank you. First and foremost, I would like to express the absolute joy it has brought our police department and our entire community to see the safe return of Jashaya. I would also like to thank the members of our community and public who worked together with us on bringing Jashaya home safely. I would like to thank the mayor and his administration. From day one, Mayor Green made it perfectly clear to me to pull in any and all resources needed to bring Jashaya home safely. I would like to thank the hardworking members of the East Orange Police Department, our public safety partners who assisted, our Criminal Investigation Bureau headed by Captain Martin, and this investigation which started with Sergeant Powell, 
and Sergeant Greenwood and all of our Criminal Investigation Division who took the lead in this effort from day one. Furthermore, I would like to thank our prosecutor, Ted Stevens, and his team, Chief Mitch McGuire, Sheriff Fontora, Under Sheriff Jones, who worked extremely closely with me during this, and his team, our Federal Bureau of Investigation, Special Agent in Charge, George Crouch, Assistant Special Agent in Charge, George Takas, New Jersey State Police, Missing Person, and Human Trafficking Unit. I would also like to thank all of our county partners, and of course, New Jersey and New York law enforcement. And as always, as I've been through all of our press conferences throughout this, I thank the media. You are it's truly our partners and have gotten it out there so we can have her safe return. Your assistance and seamless collaboration on this investigation is, is paramount. I would like to thank the Orange PD who assisted, Elizabeth PD with their drone team, and I just want to say in closing that this is a perfect example for the potential to have positive outcomes when we come together and work as a whole community. Thank you very much. Good job, Chief. Thanks so much. Um, I wanted, as the Chief pointed out, the FBI, uh, again, did a tremendous job. Uh, spoke with the special agent in charge, Crouch, last night. He was away with his family, but he appreciated getting the call, and I expected uh, the uh, deputy assistant, or rather the deputy uh, sat, uh, Mr. Packers, to be here today. I think between the rain and maybe just trying to get a little rest, because they've been on this 24-7, so, uh, but nonetheless, even in absence, we want to thank them for their invaluable assistance in all of this. Next, uh, the mayor of the city, uh, which has been uh, just under siege for the last almost month. Um, I'm sure that you can now get back to some things that you can more positively, but uh, Mayor Green was uh, essential in terms of this operation from the beginning, so supportive. He understands his city, and he certainly, I think, is probably as relieved as the rest of us today. Mayor Green. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first, let me thank all of you. Um, everyone who stand here this morning, it just shows when we work together as a team, these are the results. From day one in the city of East, East Orange, our top priority was working in collaborations with the different agencies and making sure that we brought this young lady home safe and healthy. And with that effort of all of you in this room, our residents, our nonprofit organization, our faith-based organizations, the result is that this young lady is safe and sound. So we, we're very grateful, and what we're offering here in the city of East Orange to our young people, that at any time that we can be of some help and you need to cry out to someone, we are here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And before I take questions, I just want to also acknowledge the other individuals with us today um, from the Escanty Prosecutor's Office who met uh, Tom Fennelly, who's in charge of major crimes. We have our first assistant, Ramesh Sadeo, who is here, and also our chief of detectives, Mitchell McGuire, whose team was relentless, as they always are, in terms of following every lead, making sure every stone goes uh, turned over, and uh, really bringing this to a great conclusion. And we can't be happier with this uh, with this end. I'm available for Oh, and, and Amir Jones as well. I'm so sorry. Yes. Amir Jones, who is under sheriff uh, with the Essex County Sheriff's Office. Mr. Stevens, we saw Mary Murphy from PIX11 News. We saw a photo that indicated that Shashaya had cut off her distinctive hair, mm -hmm. and that when she was approached by the Good Samaritan in New York and asked if that was her name, she denied who she was, and then later it came out that she was unhappy. Do you know if Shashaya ran away, and do you know if a crime was committed? It appears that Shashaya was a runaway. Uh, there is uh, any, with regard to crimes committed, this is a continuing investigation. Um, we don't have, we're not able to make any particular uh, announcements at this time, but we are pursuing uh, certain leads which um, we believe may yield uh, some charges. Can we get in the weeds a little bit here about uh, was she in school? Where did she go to school? When was the last time she was in school? Um, just talk about were there any issues at home 
were there any DIFUS matters or any issues with the state? Can we get into that a little bit? Well, DIFUS, as you know, is DCP and P now. I say DIFUS all the time. Me too, now right, well. yes. But uh, they um, <clears throat> did not have an open case, as far as we know. Um, with regard to school, it also is not does not appear that she was re registered in a school at present or at the time that she left home. Perhaps what she, do we know where she's been the past month? Has she been in New Jersey, in the city, or who she's been staying with? Do we know? We, we, we followed a, a route. It, it appears to be um, circuitous. It's, um, she was in several locations, uh, as far as we can tell, in New Jersey, ultimately, though, ending up in New York. Um, where um, I believe she was staying in a shelter in Brooklyn, um, but she was ultimately though um, met with met with the police uptown, I believe in the in Harlem. So she was alone. She was doing like, the security route. She was taking. Was she alone? She was. She was meeting someone there who had uh, seen her and asked her to come, and so uh, but she came alone. How did that person contact her? Uh, not aware of exactly how whether it's telephone or whether what what communication device. I'm not sure. Well, was anyone he a male? Did he know her or had he just heard he about? Was, he, he he had heard of her and was familiar with her some kind of way. We're getting to the bottom of that right now, but it doesn't appear that there was anything uh, criminal with regard to that. How does it work in terms of arrest? You know, she's a missing child. Everyone knows about her. So if she was staying with friends or family, an adult, and they knew she was missing, for them to not report her missing to the police where she was. Would they face any criminal charges or anything like that? Well, that's not our case. Right now, we're, we're happy that she's home. Uh, we are, we're not anticipating any charges against anyone right now with regard to um, uh, ferreting her away or something to that effect. What were her words regarding coming back home, and is she going to be returned to her mother, or there needs to be some type of investigation be before going back home? There's but going to be an investigation with regard to that first before she's uh, turned over back to the conditions. Uh, or the location where she existed the first So what's the process right now? Where is she? Where is she going to be? And how long would it be before she might even have an opportunity to go back home if she desires to go back home? She's um, she's in, um, she's with us or in DCPMP, a combination at a, this, a particular location. I'm not sure right now, but she basically is uh, being cared for, if you will, uh, between the, the Essex County Prosecutor's Office and DCPMP. And did she understand the, 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 the scope of the search for her when you finally reached her? Did she know what was happening? It's almost impossible to believe that she would not have known the scope of that search. But did not reach out to anyone besides she, this? Did she reach out to this person or did that person reach out to her? At this point, I don't know the particulars who reached out to who first, but it appears to me that she um, was comfortable, more comfortable where she was. Do we know why she wanted to leave home? We're, that's part of the investigation, um, and you know we've gone. We've got a we've got a direction. We think we want to go, um, but I'm not at liberty to give that final. Answer. And yesterday, the mother did talk about an Amber Alert and why that did not happen initially. Could we get into what are the particulars? How you set that up first? Uh, criteria without that. Okay. So what is? I mean, tell us what that means. I don't know what. That means. Well, what the criteria. criteria for the Amber Alert is that we have to really think that someone has been abducted first and foremost. And we never saw anything and to really lead us uh, to give us to that conclusion, lead us to that number of prerequisites. Okay. Uh, prosecutor, is, is the family, is the mother cooperating at all? Clearly there was some sort of disharmony in the household, which is why she is with you all and not with the family. He just brings up the speed with the cooperation between her parent, mother, and, and with you all. Well, I mean, you saw that the mother was um, active with up front in terms of camera, so that you had an opportunity to observe her demeanor at that time. Uh, as of right now, that we're anticipating that the mother's going to have a meeting with local law enforcement um, immediately. immediately. Would you will be part of that meeting? Uh, Your office, office, our office. office. Yeah. office, correct? Yes. Will that be today? Uh, yeah, that's our expectation. Do you think she was up front when she met with investigators through this whole thing? Too early to really give you a definitive on that right now, um, but the conclusion by the end of the day, early next week, we should have something on that. Did and she describe this, Antoine said, his harmony in the home? Did she describe that? Uh, uh, at this point, I'm not able to say anything except that the young lady appears to have run away and uh, she um, did not uh, want to make herself known to anyone and where she was. She seemed to be. Um, uh, more so at ease where she was. Mr. Stevens, I, I just want to verify because I may have missed this. You were getting, you know, texts from bosses and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so I just wanted to clarify, will there not be a reunion with mother and child today? 
Uh, right now, there is going to be a, we're expected to be a meeting with mother and law enforcement today. Based on that meeting, um, the, we'll find out what happens after that. Mr. Prosecutor, you all, all of you who spoke to great pains to talk about the media involvement in this and the multi levels of agencies who are involved in this search. This one had what we are calling right now a happy ending. She's alive and yes, she's safe. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it, the elephant in the room here is that we all know that there's been a lot of criticism since Gabby Petito disappeared yes. about African American women uh, and people disappearing or, or going missing and no one uh, jumping on it the way we did Gabby Petito. Mm -hmm. Can some of you address how this case should be a catalyst for change with that regard? Well, I, I think you've, you've capsulated, capsulated the entire thing. I can't hear you the say fact that the, the media, <laughs> I can't say it as well as you did. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, the attention which the media gives a particular case makes or breaks that case. Uh, you bring to our consciousness the important things which our community should focus on. Uh, the streets do their own thing. That, that they, we always have, always will. But what the mainstream media does, it, it gives it the kind of gravitas that we really need for a story to really reach this kind of conclusion. Um, we know that people were uh, aware of everything we know between watching TV, by the time I do a press conference, time I get home is on TV, hey, it, there. So if I see it, then X number of million people are also seeing it. Then on top of that, you add in what the, 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 the impact of the social network, and, and I can't, I have to believe that that's the real promise of social networking, is that we're able to bring important issues to the forefront, get it out there in an extremely extensive way, and then nobody can say they don't know. With regard to this particular young lady, I'm extremely enthused by this result because you know, I grew up in East Orange, whether you, everybody, East Orange, North, everybody around. These are marginalized communities by the media from the perception of the public. And this sort of effort goes a long way, I think, toward melding, bringing a collaboration between the, um, the people on the street, the community at large, and mainstream media, and also us, in order to say that we do get things done. In the midst of all of this, the mayor is, is approached by individuals who want to say, y'all not doing anything. Despite the fact that we've got thousands of flyers, we had uh, several press conferences, that we've had meetings we know with every entity from local law enforcement to the FBI. So we know we're doing something, but it still takes a successful result. Nothing beats a failure but a success, and this is a successful result. And it's mainly because of what we've done here and what you have uh, latched on to it and given us the legitimacy that this uh, effort really deserves. But does that also add in that, once again, here's another black child runaway? I mean, you know, instead of, you know, it being, it makes you think, well, you know, here we are again. And when the next comes up and it's a more serious case and the child is really, you know, not run away, mm -hmm. maybe people might say, ah, you know, she probably ran away. I think we have to treat every one of them seriously. I mean, I don't think that anybody mm -hmm. said that Gabby Petito camping out in, the, where was she, the Grand Tito, yeah, where was she the Grand Tito, Tetons, yeah. uh, here's another white girl out in the van, you know, um, doing a Scooby-Doo or something like that. <laughs> so I, I think that every mm -hmm. issue, every one case has got to be judged on its own merits. We in Essex County Prosecutor's Office deal with every case on a case-by-case -case basis, and I think that that's how um, everybody, all law enforcement should approach, um, not only just law enforcement, law enforcement, media, everybody should approach every situation. Everything does not end the way it appears to have begun in every case. So we have to give us time, and for every, and I apologize in advance, for every time I can't answer a question when I say that it's an ongoing investigation, because we don't know where it's going to lead at that particular time. And so that's why we have to keep overturning. Two stories. more questions. This young lady was missing for almost a month. <clears throat> you say that she, the last known location was in a shelter. Mm -hmm. How long was she in the shelter? And previous to the, her, her staying in the shelter, please give us some sense of where else she was. Was she living on the street? Was she living with acquaintances? Did somebody take her in? And how did what she happened? get around? Like, how did she afford subways yeah, that she could pay for a Kit Kat Listen, bar? I, I can't. Uh, right now, this is. these are all facts which we are still trying to develop. However, 
obviously this was an extremely resilient and resourceful young lady. Mm -hmm. And she decided that she wanted to be someplace other than where she had been. And she made it happen. And did she actually cut her hair? I'm sorry, I don't know if you actually addressed that. Did she cut her hair to blend in? Looks like and will we get an updated picture of how she looks like? It's, in the, it's out in the social media. I just wanted to know if officially we'll get a picture. Um, I'm, I, I, Social media is terribly important, as we indicated before, but the fact of the matter is that not everyone is on Facebook. Not everyone is, has Instagram availability. You folks, the mainstream media, are the most important factor here in this particular case, and in all cases. So let's make, make sure we clarify that, okay? Social media, yes, it's terribly important for us. We're using it. We're going to do that. But not everyone is on social media. In fact, a lot of the folks, old folks like me, are not on social media. We rely very heavily on the mainstream media, which is what happened in this particular case. And folks, you made it happen. It's as simple as Mr. that. Mr. Stevens, do you know if she was point out that the sheriff usually says old folks like me and the prosecutor, so let me on this. Do you know if she left the house because her mother was upset about the lost debit card? Is that the motivator? Or was it a buildup of a lot of things? We're still trying to determine whether that's part of the continuing investigation, so I can't give you anything else right over that. So we'll give this to the prosecutor. I don't know who's going to do the picture. We have a picture of the picture. Every conclusion of, our, of today, we should be able to By the end of the day, you. we should be able to release a picture. Mr. Stevens, um, so, you know, you've made it clear here that it appears Moore ran away and was doing what she could to evade being found, but when this, she spoke with the person who eventually identified her, that at some point she did start to give a little. Do you have any indication why she started to maybe open up and allow herself to be found? Was she not happy? Was, did she eventually decide, oh, I don't like living in a shelter, yada, yada, yada? Well, lo local law enforcement, NYPD, is who she finally came clean with. So, um, you know, that's just a question of NYPD doing what NYPD does uh, and getting to the bottom of it. All right, so thank you very much. Thank you very much.